hope you're ready to get started in learning a little bit more about electrons. We've talked a lot about protons and neutrons and their significance when we're uh, talking about atoms and elements in the periodic table. But um, now we need to focus a little bit on electrons because even though uh, electrons are really, really small, they're very significant when we're talking chemistry. All right, so let's review really quickly what we know so far about electrons. All right, the first thing that we know is that they are really teeny tiny, so, so small, about 1, 1,840th the mass of one proton, which we already know is really, really tiny, right? Okay, we also know that they have a negative electric charge. Now, that's going to be really important for our continued study with the periodic table, with bonding, and with chemical reactions. So, find a place to put that in your brain and keep it nice and tight and close to you because you're going to need to remember that frequently. All right, and then also they're located in a cloud-like area around the nucleus. Now the reason models like this on the screen uh, look like they have these really beautiful little orbits is because that is telling you, showing you the difference in energy levels. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But so th these are the protons and the neutrons here in the nucleus. And then the electrons are spread out in this cloud-like region around the nucleus. And remember how we talked about if we had a, a nucleus the size of, of a blueberry, how far away those first electrons are going to be. Uh, and so you, you have to also keep in mind that most of the atom is empty space and that the electrons are, are spread out in a really large uh, area. Uh, even though the atom is very small, they're, they're still really, really far in relation uh, to the nucleus. Okay. Now, another thing about electrons is that they have a lot a lot of energy. They are the hyperactive kids in the atomic pool. They are all over the place. They don't have really nice uh, uniform orbits. They do tend to stay in a certain energy level, but um, they're, they're constantly moving. They got a lot of energy, right? Now some of them have more energy than others. The ones that are the furthest from the nucleus in an atom. So if you look here, this first level has two electrons. This next one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and then this next one has two. All right. Now we say that the ones in this outer energy level are the ones with the highest level of energy. So all of the electrons are high energy, but the ones that are furthest from the nucleus are the ones that have the highest energy level. We call those valence electrons. Okay. Now, why do we give them a special name? What's so special about valence electrons? Well, it all has to do with bonding. So if you understand valence electrons, it's going to make the concept of chemical bonding. So bonding is when you have different atoms that are chemically joined. So we're talking about a chemical change here. So when you have, uh, maybe you have two oxygen atoms that are bound together, or maybe you have um, a hydrogen, two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom bound together like with with water. Okay, so those are chemically bonded to each other and that all has to do with their valence electrons and how those valence electrons behave. Okay, uh, so if knowing about valence electrons is important, how do we know how many valence electrons an atom has? Well, it is easy. My favorite tool in science, the periodic table. It's great. Okay, so um, the periodic table is a very useful tool when trying to determine the number of valence electrons that any atom of an element will have. Okay, and that's at least for, for many elements. All right, so let's look at the group one alkali metals. So on the periodic table, group one 
are these that are in this very first column. Hydrogen as, is at the top. We know that hydrogen is a nonmetal, but it's in group one with these other with these metals because of its valence electrons. So group one, the alkali metals and hydrogen, all of these elements, their atoms have one valence electron. That means that they have one electron in that outermost energy level that are very, very high energy and are involved in the bonding. Okay. Now the other electrons are important too, but when we're talking about bonding, we just want to focus on those valence electrons. And group one alkali metals and hydrogen, regardless of their atomic number, they all have one valence electron. All right, next up, the group two, alkaline earth metals. That's the second column on the periodic table. If you have one of these handy, it's always good to look at it. Now, uh, group two, it starts with beryllium and magnesium, calcium and strontium, it goes down. Even though all of these have very different uh, atomic numbers, differing numbers of protons. I mean, look down here, you've got 88 in this one and 4 in this one. That's a big difference. But when we say group 2, it has to do with valence electrons. And guess how many valence electrons every element of this uh, group has? All of them have 2. 2. Magic number. Are you seeing the pattern yet? Now, things get a little funky when you get over into the transition metals. The transition metals cover from group 3, which is right here, all the way over to group 12. Okay. Now, um, transition metals are a little bit harder to interpret using the periodic table. Uh, and sometimes uh, the, same, the same element, for example, uh, iron, sometimes iron would have two valence electrons and sometimes it would have three. So there's there's a little bit of um, uh, discrepancy <laughs> with the transition metals. They're, they're a little funky and it's not important that you memorize all of them. If you need to know how many valence electrons uh, there we're talking about with a transition metal I will be happy to tell you in class when we're working on those so don't don't stress out about the transition metals just know that they can have varying numbers of valence electrons right and then finally let's talk about groups 13 through 18 so group 13 starts here boron is at the top of that group and it's also called the boron family makes sense right so all of the atoms of these elements have how many valence electrons do you think? Shout out to my SSIS babies. Okay, how many of you said 13? Uh, wrong. They actually have three. So group 13, the boron family, the atoms of these elements have three valence electrons. So they have three electrons that are involved in bonding. All right, group 14, or also called the carbon family, what do you think? How many valence electrons? 14? No. They have four. So carbon, silicon, germanium, all of these elements, their atoms have four valence electrons that are available for bonding. Did you see what I said? Did you hear what I said? Four valence electrons available for bonding. Hmm. Then, in group 15, they have five valence electrons. This is also called the nitrogen family because here's nitrogen at the top of the column. Okay? And then group 16, they have six valence electrons that can be available for bonding. Ha -ha. And what do you think they're called? Oxygen family. Very good. Okay? Then group 17, which starts out with fluorine, fluorine family exactly except they also have another name they're sometimes called the halogens okay and we'll talk more about these different families uh, in class we'll be doing some uh, invest investigation about each of the different uh, groups or families so this the fluorine family or the halogens they have seven valence electrons available for bonding and then finally group 18 which Sometimes it's called the helium or the neon family, but it's actually um, more commonly called the noble gases. The noble gases over here in group 18, they have eight valence electrons. 
Now, I will tell you this. Reactivity, so reactivity has to do with how easily uh, an element or an atom will react or bond with other atoms to form new substances. So reactivity has to do with chemical reactivity, right? So um, the easy thing to say is that um, the further over you are here, the higher the reactivity. So group one and group two, the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals, very, very reactive. And then if you go over here, the noble gases, very non react they're very stable, we say. They don't react. They don't, they don't want to bond with anybody. They're happiest on their own. And we'll talk more about, about what reactivity and stability have to do with valence electrons. So we'll continue talking a little bit more about reactivity and what the periodic table can tell you about reactivity. We'll talk more about valence electrons and what they have to do with bonding. And I hope that you've gotten a lot of good information from this video. I'll see you in class.